All right, so in this video, we're gonna talk about the Plant PXP sequencer and some important things that you need to know about it, um, you know, as far as being able to control it and go about, you know, doing that. Um, now you can see right here, uh, we're in the basic control aspect and we have the ability to start the sequence, but personally, I like to go to the display run so I can actually see what's happening. And what do I mean by that? I can see exactly my inputs and my outputs and they coincide with my PLC inputs and outputs. So all of my inputs that are going into my P sequencer block and all of my outputs as well. So I get to see that, right? So I can actually start the system and like if I start the system, you'll see that AVO1 should cut on and we can actually go through and look at this a little bit deeper. Uh, in this atmosphere, you can open up the configuration and you can open up running and then go to your first step, right? So you can go to whatever step you want to. You can add a step. Uh, now, in this case, we're just going to go to our step. Um, this one, we're going to go to one. So we'll go to one and we'll see what happens on one. So you can see I don't really have anything checked, so I'm not checking on anything. The outputs, I am turning on the, I'm, I'm actually turning off. I'm checking the, uh, I'm turning the, the AVO one, or six and AVO seven off and the pump request off. So I'm doing that and you can see that right there. And then, so, in two, step two, what I'm gonna do is go through, and in step two, I'm actually gonna come on and check the status of AVO1, AVO2, AVO3, 4, AVO uh, in the pump running, pump one running, pump two running, pump, and then syrup, is syrup added? So you can see how that functionality works. You can also see my digital outputs. What am I actually commanding it to do? And that's how you actually go through and set everything up. So if I were to start this, what's happening right here is you can see that I have my AVO ones on, my pump is running, my flow is happening. So my AVO three is on. So I'm having product coming out of this tank going into this tank. So that's gonna hit its set point Right, so when it hits its set point, it's gonna have this input, it's called master added. That's the master uh, recipe right here added. So everything is, is actually, everything that I'm monitoring in, st in step one, which is AVO1 and AVO3, and that the pump one is running, and the batch is started. All that's good except for the master added. And so as soon as we, get, we hit the, the recipe, you know, we actually find, you know, hit the, the point where we're at the, how much we are supposed to add in this point of the recipe, then we can actually do that, right? So we can come over here and see the, when the uh, syrup is at, or the master is added, we can come over here and look at that. And we can look at the OTE for that. And you can see that the current stage is, okay, we're looking for about 200, uh, 200, uh, pounds or, or I believe it's yeah 200 pounds of that so as soon as it hits that as soon as this hits 200 pounds this should come on and then go to the next step now again the next how is that configured again come over here then you're going to go here and then you're going to go to run and then whatever step you want to go to so if I want to go to one <clears throat> then step configuration you can see the inputs, what I'm monitoring, and the outputs, what I'm actually telling it to do. So right now, we're waiting on the master batch, to, and you see the master batch was added right here, so we now we have moved to step two. So what happened was we, we can see that the master added right here is high. So when it turns blue, that's me, that means it's, it's actually, you know, the bid is high. So if we look at our actual sequencer itself, because you're not supposed to actually program from the sequence, you're not, don't, don't, you're gonna add your, your tags into the sequencer, but when it comes down to actually programming the sequence of events and how the steps are, are laid out, you're gonna do that from the front end. 
so you can easily see what everything is is doing right here um, the point of it is is the configuration of the whole P sequencer happens on the front end okay so right now we're actually adding if you look we're adding the corn syrup right now and see it added the corn syrup and then as soon as that happened it went ahead and now it's going to add the caffeine as soon as it adds the caffeine it's going to have that and then transition to the actual mixing stage and at the mixing stage then it should have the pump running okay so or, or the actual uh, mixer running so we can find out why the mixer didn't run um, because we should have start requested the mixer so let's look at that we're going to go here we're going to look at here and everything did one shot uh, I think it's the timing of this uh, what I like to do personally is change this to um, let's just say this is this is the power flex power flex and then we'll look at the input and we'll say is it active if it's active then, then we know it's good and then that way we it's kind of one shots it so we'll go ahead and change that now you can see that that worked now we should have start started our pump or started our our mixer to, to mix in that stage and now you can see that the mixer is running what it's waiting on here is is the in, in configuration 4 is it's waiting on the actual time so it's going to mix for five minutes okay so if we look at that and we look at our configuration we go to running and then we go to step four which we can just open it up in step one and then highlight over to step four you can just keep doing this till you get to step four or you can just in it again type in the number but what I want to show you here is what it's waiting on so I have a time set so step uh, the step wait timer preset you can see right there and that equates to five minutes so in that aspect in that aspect it's going to wait and have that feature it's going to be it's not actually something that i can command a digital output digital input analogs or anything like that it's actually done from the step itself okay so this timer will be functional the functionality of that timer as soon as the step is active it starts okay so you can see that now i do have this bypassable to save time and i can so i can bypass that so now it should come in and stop the pump or stop the mixer as soon as it stops the mixer then it's going to wait another minute one minute and that's the settle time so we want it to settle now we can actually bypass that one as well but again if you wanted to look at that we go to configuration running step and then if we want to look at five we want to come over here to five make sure the most important thing is to make sure you're on the steps and then you can see that I have this for one minute so again 60 thousandths right 60 thousand and that's going to be one minute and that's what it's waiting on so we have 18 16 15 seconds left and then as soon as this the timer's done it's going to move over to the next step which is step six it's going to open AVO6, AVO7, and then start the pump running. So now that has transferred. Now we'll come over here. And you can see how quick that other transition was. Let's close this. So now what it's doing, it's actually running. It's running the tank weight out of AVO6 into the pump, out to... AVO7 which is going into the finished product tank and you can see that what's going out here or what's yeah what's leaving the mixing tank is going into the finished product tank and then once everything is done uh, basically we'll have the mixing tank is empty with the mixing tank empty what we'll do is it will transition to the next step and then can it will finish out finish out the whole process of the batch so that batch would be effectively complete at that point in time so 
we'll sit here and watch this last little bit happen because again I don't have this I do have this where I can step through and force this on okay so that's forced on so as soon as the mixing tank is empty now okay so just because I forced on the timer does not mean it's going to transition I forced that on now I don't have the ability I don't have it enabled to force that bit on now you can go in your configuration have it where you can force any one of these bits on but again when you go down to having a piece sequencer and using a piece sequencer generally speaking you're not going to bypass anything it's critical so you can see this should be empty let's see why it did not come empty uh, we'll say i believe this is finished uh, flow meters this is finished product tank uh, let's look at the mixing tank finished product no uh, let's look at the tank let's, actually let's go over here look at this and this is going to be the tag substitution so this is going to be the mixing tank weight so again I was just setting this up on another computer so um, mixing tank weight you can see that and we can see where it subtracts and we're looking for a batch complete so we did not get our batch complete so let's, let's just go ahead and have that in there and just say that if it's in step 7 to allow that and that will clear that up okay so now again when it comes down to it it's way without a tolerance right it's it's less than or equal to so but now it's not in step seven anymore so it changed out of that step so now we come over here and we can start the batch again but again when it comes down to it we ended up having to fix a problem so just keep in mind that's that's how you kind of trouble, troubleshoot and go about you know configuring and stuff like that right so if you just are looking for the ins and outs of how a p sequencer works with a plant pax system this again is why i made this video because i was restoring this on a different vm and again when i when you do that you have to work out bugs and stuff like that so i it's good that when I the reason I make these videos is so that you can actually see that you can see that process because in the in the real world things don't work perfect right so you have to troubleshoot it and you have to see what's going on you have to dig into it so again when it comes down to it that's in this system right here as simple as it is it's just basically running three ingredients in and then discharging mixing those ingredients and then discharging that into the finished product tank you can actually see that whole process running um, and hopefully, you know, with that said, you know, this was a, a helpful video to help you understand a little bit more about the P sequencer and again, how the configuration works. It's a front end system. So don't, don't look at, you know, the back end and start saying, start thinking you're going to troubleshoot it from here because this instruction is not something you can just open up. Okay. You cannot just open this up and open up the logic for this instruction. It's closed loop. Uh, plant px is closed on the plant on the p sequencer but it does give you a lot of information online on how to use that um, and so just in case you wanted to know also have a course on that but i mean when it comes down to it to show you how exactly i did all this uh, build it from scratch and and the actual uh, heater i did a, a heater as well like a heating system so not it was not just a batching system it was a heating system but again when it comes down to it if you wanted to know more about that, that that's available as well but when it comes down to this you can see um, just exactly how to do this in a single video on youtube right if you just wanted to know how the p sequencer worked and how it operated how everything was done this is how that functionality works with that said hopefully you enjoyed it we'll see you guys on the next one